Thanks to the house and the beard of Israel scattered throughout the nations of the earth, we come to you in the most precious name of our redemption, the name of Yoshua Hamashiach. For his blood is sufficient. It has redeemed us from the curses, the khala. We were all filthy and vile. We were despicable. There was no reason for us to be redeemed. Yet, by the sprinkling of the dam, the blood, which was sufficient, but it could not cleanse. It was a sprinkling of that dam, the precious blood, that purchased us from the destruction of our own, uh, our own will, our own gahash. I want to continue that way today. I want to, I want to read something before I began. There's a letter I want to read. <coughs> We have seen the earth, the world, the vast majority in its pontification of one of the most religious specters upon the face of the earth that rivals uh, even Ramadan of the wicked Muslims. It was known as Christmas, Xmas. And we as a nation of Israel, we must stop debating whether it is Jesus Christ's birthday, because it is. It is his birthday. It is the birthday of Jesus Christ, because he is a fictitious lie. He is the byproduct of the consortment of lies and corruption. And we're in the most damnable, vilest, despicable generations upon the face of the earth. And so we must not debate that. And someone tells you it's Jesus' birthday, you concur. You're right. You don't even try to interface or interact. You're sure Hamashiach with such a damnable, despicable lie. We have learned the word of the whore quite well to defend. We defend the whore quite well. Damn their Jesus, their Christo, damn them. So you concur. We're celebrating Jesus' birthday. I will say, go on, my friend. You're doing it right, too. You got it right. The Torah commands us to be wise as a serpent. A serpent does not mess with you. It's only when you encroach upon that serpent. A rattlesnake can lay right there. As long as you do not interfere with his face, he won't touch you. He will find an exit. And so we just find an exit among this vile generation. Of course, when they say that to me, I tell them you are right. That's all right. How about that? You got yourself together, don't you? I don't try to debate them or try to give reason. Now, if they ask me a reason of the tikvah, the promises of the dabarim, the word of Yahmi, then I give them a reason. And then I denounce their Jesus, I denounce their gods. I denounce their Nahash. Nahash is a mind that its every motive is to overthrow Almighty Yahweh, the mind of Yah, to subdue it. That one esteems the tower of their will, what pleases them, their hafiz, what is most pleasurable unto them, and they don't deny that. I don't give a damn for no one. They will tell Almighty Yah to get off their back. Damn their Jesus. Damn his birthday. As 
Eob said, let the day that I was born be cursed. I'm a wretched, vile thing. So I don't celebrate her damn birthday. I celebrate the coming. Yoshua HaMashiach. And as Dawid said, I was simcha. I was glad. When they said, let us enter into the bed of y'all on this Shabbat. Everything else, it doesn't mean a damn thing. Damn it all. This is a crop, immature generation. Where are the strong men? Where are the Geba, the warriors of might? That even the Ishur submit unto them as Torah command. That you submit unto your Ish as you submit unto Almighty Yah. This is a damn bodacious generation of arrogance and pride. And you think you're a damn wife. Well, it commands the husband to love his wife as Yoshua HaMashiach loved the assembly, doesn't it? Can I ask you this question? Does Yah stay with us even after we sin? After we lie and do every kind of wicked thing? So the man is still with you in all of your damn rebellion, this woman. How about that? I think to myself often, I say, yeah, I'm so glad. There are men that are much more dynamic, much more, have a greater oratorical skill. But there ain't too many that make it as simple as I do. I look for the simplicity. Because in that, then we can adhere. With perfect, it is right. As we would say, Yahshua is straight. Be straight with me, man. So I rival any in the simplicity of Yah's truth that even the babes can understand. I'm not looking for some kind of high, pervaded type of expression. To show you that I have some kind of uh, expertise in the matter of knowledge and intellectual. What is the hell is your intellectual capacity? And that's what we have been given over to. I bring it down to the basics. How about that? I remember a fellowship we had. The preacher got up one day. He said, this preacher deals with everything. Tell us how to bathe and clean ourselves physically, spiritually, mentally. He leaves no stone unturned. You got to wash every nook and cranny. You got to get down between the fat layers of our corruption. Just like with our flesh. You got to pick up the rolls that roll over like layers of burlap. Get under it. Dirt gets in there. Sweat. And it stinks. And that's what's wrong with us. Hallelujah. You're not fine. We're not fine. We are miserable, vile, repugnant, amalgamation of every kind of wickedness. And I just bless Yah that he makes himself known by his mishpat. He judge us. And let us know. Are we the sons of Yah? So he received us this morning. Does he not? Does he correct us? Musa, every son that he received, he, Musa, he corrects and chases him, be time. So he corrects us. We're not what we think we are. We got a false delusional image of ourselves. And it's wrong. I will, my friend. We greet you all that have joined us on the Shabbat, and by no means do you escape. I speak to Ko, that is the entire house, the body, the house of Yisrael. It is not by some coincidence that your ears are tuned in, your eyes to the visual or the audio of this service today. Because you are in a mess, whether you want to buy it or not. Now you can soothe yourself with your own conceited lies. And that's why you're in the condition that you're in and the shape that you're in. It is the true sign of a wise man. It's one thing he never rejects is correction. 
Musa council that reproves, rebukes, admonish. That's what Musa is. And a wise man knows that his heart is pure, and he knows that all things to the pure are pure. He rejects nothing. He sees a discipline in everything. This is a generation that is sottish. It is a damn stupid generation that discounts everything, but yet it bewildered, misguided mind. They don't reject that. They love the lies of their mind. This false, corrupt generation. This is a false generation. It's because of the nature of Nahash. It is a spirit that is devoted unto the deepest secrets of darkness. Do we not hold secretive uh, our secretive ways within our own bosom? There are things you don't share with no one. And so it is a mind that opposes the mind of Yah. It is the mind that produced one of the most vilest of venom, a poison, than any other mind. And that's why we are so dead. We're not a lively. The Torah commands us to offer, to bring to Yah a lively, a chayil, zebach. An offering that is alive, it is lively, it is of strength. Is what you have labored for. We must bring a lively offering unto Yah. We can't bring that which has been spotted with sin and corruption. And that is what Nahash does. That's why it plays into this uh, segregation of the tribe of Dan. What we find in Revelation Diliana 14. Where all the tribes are named except uh, Don, the judge. Why? Because what are the things that he did not do, Yisrael? And this is what Nahash never allows. Our minds to be sealed. Our minds to be hatam. To be sealed with the power of Yah's Torah. So he didn't judge the house of Don. Do we judge ourselves, Don? We don't like judging ourselves, do we? We do not. I will come on. We don't like judging ourselves, do we? We might as well be honest uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and denounce this damnable hypocrisy. Uh? We don't like judging ourselves. We don't like judging ourselves. And the Torah commands us to judge ourselves. That we be not judged. We don't like judgment. We don't like Yah to correct us. And that is what Don did not do, he did not judge the house. And that's the nature of Don. And because of that, it allows this uh, vile Nahash, the spirit, the mind of Hashatan, to kala, to curse Yah, to reproach Yah, to speak against him. Anytime we reproach what the Torah commands us, uh, what is that? That we have this arrogance to say that uh, that's not applicable for me. Uh, that's not my instruction. Uh, it's an assault upon the mind of Yah. It's an assault upon the mind of Yah. When one doesn't realize that one is lying and one is full of facetiousness. Uh, and one is full of uh, uh, maliciousness and one doesn't see that. Uh, and one speaks to one's own uh, harsh. Uh, this bewitching of one's mind. The subtleties of one's own nature. The beguiling of one's own corruption that beguiles them. We're wise if we want any kind of instruction that brings us to the light, to the ma'or, to the light of rejoicing. It's when a man sees a light from a deep, dark internal, when he sees a light, uh, the whole countenance change. His whole expression changes because he has seen the light and the ma'or is the light that calls us uh, to rejoice in Yah's Torah. Nahash uh, doesn't cause that. And that's why even when Yehov, when he poured out the blessings upon uh, each son, uh, he spoke specifically 
specifically to Dan and told him what shall arrive out of his nature, what shall be the strength of his doing, uh, and that he shall be the one that this anti-opposition, this nature, this mind that rises up against Yahshua, that will bite the horse hoof. And that's a powerful message. Yes, will Achmikaya, I will teach that on next week. I will show you the simplicity. But I want to show you what nurtures the mind of Don. I want to show you what nurtures his mind. And the only way you're going to eradicate that among Israel, we must seek one thing, and that is the mind. As Shaul says, let this same mind that was in Yeshua HaMashiach, it must abide in Yisrael. We must have the same mind. We must have the same laba. The laba, what produces the very great love of Yah. We must have the same mind, Yisrael. And there is this, this spirit that rises up out of Dan. You must eradicate it from the house of Yisrael. I want to pinpoint it precisely. This is what shall arrive from his nature. This is what shall be the opposition of our Hamashiach. And we don't realize that we have this in us. We oppose Yah. I know that we that are self-righteous uh, and our pontification of our flesh, uh, our deeds and our actions, uh, we don't think that we are that way. The strength of any man is to show you his weaknesses. Well, how do I become strong? Hell, Yah gives us uh, one of the most beautiful remedies. You want to understand what your koach is? You want to know how to have a great strength? We are damnable, twisted, ignorant people. Hell, we love all Mart, uh, y'all Mart, more, uh, 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 and the we market more than we love Yah. Can I quote you a simple verse in Torah that shows us our strength? Uh, it says this, that, quote, the joy of Yah is our strength. Yeah. When we have the simcha, the rejoicing, the delight in Almighty Yah, it brings about the ka'ach. It brings about the strength of maturity in life. It brings about the nurturing and the nature of the mind of Yahshua. We don't take no joy in Yah. We don't give a damn about Him. Falsehood. Oh, how you doing, sis? Hey, brother, I just got joy in my heart. You damn liar. You don't have a damn thing. Your folly. Stupidity. The joy. You have no strength because you have no joy. You have no strength because you have no joy. The joy. See, isn't that so easy? The joy of Yah. The joy of Yah. The sim, zimka. The pleasure. The joy of Yah is my strength. The joy. The joy. The joy of Yah that refortifies me. And causes me to stand up like a good like a man of strength. It is what caused that testosterone of spiritual power to rise. It is the joy. It's so simple. Are you trying to fight it from Nahash, a bewitch, beguile, wicked mind that doesn't even identify your own wickedness? A mind of slumbering, of poverty, loving to sleep and slumber. And you think you're going to have strength? You have no joy in Yah. There is no delight in Yah. That's our strength, Yisrael. Yah, when you get that joy, you get that shown of joy down in your nefesh, in your being, that becomes the producer of life. When you hear the Torah of Yah, it causes you to rejoice. It causes your whole countenance to change. 
It caused your, your, your perspectives of life uh, to evolve and to change over seconds. That is our strength. You have no other strength without the joy of Yah. And that's why we don't have strength because we don't get joy. And what Yah calls uh, and permits in our lives to fortify our assurance uh, of His promises. That we wait upon Him. We must patiently do that. But that's not what Nahash tells you. It speaks against you. The day you defy Him, uh, you'll become like Him. So you try uh, to, in your own way, uh, to alleviate circumstances and situations in your life. Uh, and you've dug a damn deeper hole. You're a fool. Uh, what you are. And that's a fact, Yisrael. We need someone that's poignant and straightforward with us and tell us the truth. Don't tell me a lie. Tell me the truth. You lie to me, you make me angry. Well, that's how I said. I, I don't too hardly forget what people say to me. So and, and instead of debate, I said, okay, okay, you said that. Go ahead, man. I'm the type that I would say, okay, I take the responsibility. Okay, my fault. As we would say, my bag. My expression or what I said, I can't legitimize what I said because maybe I inserted a word that threw off the whole tenor of my speech to you. But I don't forget what I say. We're a generation that so easily forget. Oh, I didn't say that. Oh, I didn't say that to him. Oh, I didn't say that to her. How is it that you can't, you can't remember what everyone says to you? But you can't remember a damn thing you say. You can't tell me what I said. You can't tell me precisely. And you can't tell me what you said. Go to hell. I say it that way. We're getting closer to the coming of Yahshua. Getting closer to that day. Yes, we are. I have nothing to live for but him. What else? I want to begin here in the book, the writing of Leviticus. I want to finish this today. Hallelujah. Whether you bear with me or not, it makes no difference. Hallelujah. It says in the book of Weira, Leviticus, chapter 24 and verse 10. I want to read this. It's vitally important that the genealogy is prescribed here precisely. It is not just something that is injected. It was carefully crafted by the mind of Almighty Yahweh. And the pinsmanship of those that strived, he intended for every word that he spoke on to be hatab, to be written so that our eyes may see and that the revelation of this truth may be understood. Leviticus chapter 24 verse 10. It tells us of a son. Here this woman was a bath, a daughter of Yisraya. She was a Yisraelitish. She was a woman of the seed of Yisraya. Her father, he was a man of Mitzra. He was an Egyptian. He was a man that was an Egyptian. How can one's father be of Mitzra and the woman is uh, a Hebrew Israelite. That's what it says. And her father was of Mitzray, of Mitzri, went out among the children of Israel. And this son, she had a son of this woman and of this man. He began to strive or he strove nasa. We strive with each other, don't we, Yisrael? He began to strive, to struggle 
You find that among men today love to struggle with immature opinion of doctrine. And it's not based upon the power and the validity of Torah. They like to speak their minds. So they began to strive. They strove together in the gathering, in the camp. And this woman who was a Israelite, her son, the woman's son, it says he began to nachab. He began to blaspheme. He began to curse the very power of Yah, to speak with villainy against Yah. He began to pierce even the heart of the whole camp of Yisrael. He began to speak. If that name Jesus doesn't trouble you in your spirit when you hear something is wrong, damn the name of Jesus Christ. I won't stop saying that. It is what has beguiled me and hoodwinked me. So this one began to nakha, began to blaspheme. Listen, the name of Almighty Yahweh. It is the name whereby we are sealed with. We're not sealed with the name of Yahshua. We're not sealed by Haya, I mean to come, to come and went out to come before. This is a stupid generation. You can feed them anything. And they think that they're wise in their own conceit. They don't even keep the Shabbat. They don't even honor Yah. They do some of the most vilest of wickedness. And in their own pontification of their self-grandizing ways, they justify their own damn wickedness. They're vile. They're wicked. They're corrupt. He began to curse the name of Yah. And said, who is your Abba? We say, I know my Nahash. That's what we speak in our mind. We don't think that Yah sees. And every thought of our mind, he knows. And everything that is conjured up in us, that he sees that before you even speak it. We are so brazen and so bold. We frankly do not give a damn. The Ruach of Yah discerns the very thought and the very intent of one's heart. Why? Because Yah is Ruach. He is the life of all living substance. He sets before us life and death, even death is life. He sets before us life and death, tov and evil. He tells us what to choose. He tells us. He commands us what to choose. Choose life. And we live. Choose Torah. And we live, Yisraya. And so this Nahaj begins to speak against Yah. What uh, is the name of Don? He is a judge, isn't it? Isn't he? Uh? And when we don't judge ourselves, uh, we have negated to seal our minds uh, with the truth of Yah. When we don't judge ourselves and say, you're wicked, you're vile, you're corrupt, uh, we negate to seal our minds uh, with the seal of Almighty Yahweh. That's what we do, Yisrael. Yeah. And that's what Don negated to seal the house of Yisraeli with truth uh, by judging them. Yeremiah says, correct me, uh, Muzza, counsel me, correct me. He said, correct me in your judgment, uh, in your mishpats. Uh, judge me according to the Torah and not in your anger, your haron, his fierce anger, lest I come to low to nothing. To, I become dismal. You eviscerate me. We must understand the entirety of the truth of Yah. Not these sermonized little, little boys, these Naha today. We need Zakain that are wise. And men denounce their own damn nature. And they began to labor in the Torah to understand. Uh, and speak profoundly with strength uh, and truth when they speak. Uh, everyone wants to hear what they say. No man spoke like Yahshua. Is he in us? Did he give the gifts unto men? So men ought to speak with the power of those gifts. You don't have to speak loud like me, but when you talk, all ears are open, Yisrael. Yeah. So the woman's son began to chala, she began, he began to make a despicable denouncing or, or denouncement of Almighty Yahweh's name. And began to give credence uh, and extolling to the name of uh, Zeus, Jesus, and Lord Baal, uh, and God.
Yes, so precise. They brought him to Moshe the messenger. The Yah says, I don't want to get his, forget his mother's name. Um, her name is Shalomith, the one that is peaceful. Shalomith, he says, uh, and the daughter of Dibri, he talks, and of the tribe of Dan. This is where she had come from. She was a Israelite woman of the tribe of Dan. And so when they went to the messenger, they took this lad and they put him in a ward. For what reason? That the theft, the tongue, the mind of Yah might be shown to them. We must have the mind of Yahshua. We must know what is of Yah and what is not. And we must take the corrective course uh, that Yah commands us. So they sought the mind of Yah. They sought the instructions. They sought the counsel of Yah. We don't seek Yah for a damn thing. They sought when one seeks. It, it is a diligent effort. Uh, it is when one laid down all of those bondages and oppressions uh, that bind them. Whereby they can't pray. Whereby they can't, as they would say, break through. Uh, but they sought the mind of Yah on that matter. What should we do? Uh, how do we uh, rem uh, uh, remedy this matter? Yah spoke unto Moshe. He did not speak unto all of them. He spoke unto one man. He spoke unto Moshe as he called his nobi, the prophet of Haran. And he said, Moshe shall be like a mighty one unto you. And what he commands you to do, speak unto the nature of Nahash, unto Pharaoh. But he shall be as one that has the power of supremacy unto you. And you inquire of him. We have disregarded the ranks of Yah today. Every man in Israel was not like Moshe. Neither is every man like you. Even the world tells you that. The world tells you we're all different. Doesn't the world tell you that? And then men challenge other men to say, I'm just like you. You're not like me. I would not want to be weak as you are. I know I'm weak, but you are weak, man. I know you are weak, and you're just like me. You are weak, man. I don't want you to be like me. I want to be like your sure. They sought the man of Yah, and Yah spoke unto his messenger Moshe. He says, uh, bring forth him that has Kala outside of the camp. Don't do it inside of the house. Take them outside of the camp. And then all that heard him, that Shemach, everyone that heard his mouth, his speech, Yah says, lay hands upon his head. What? That there be no sin accounted unto you. That you not be charged with the same sin. You are a witness of this, this most vile, repulsive act of this fool. You lay hands on him and he says, let all the congregation stone him. And you shall speak to the children of Israel saying, whosoever curse Yah shall bear his sin. Yah said you do it so you let everyone know. That whosoever shall make Kalah curse Yah or speak evil against his name uh, shall bear the same sin uh, of this one they have stoned. We cannot bear the same sin. We cannot uh, lay hold unto the false isms uh, and the lies of Nahash uh, that deludes us and deceive us and bring us under delusion that we are all right. We're not all right. We can't struggle with truth. We can't strive against Yah. We can't struggle with this truth, Yisrael. We must shumach, we must hear with the explicit purpose of obeying it uh, with great diligence and great faithfulness. Uh, we better stop our damn complaining uh, and murmuring. That's why he strove with another man. This boy was to strive with the man. You got men that are, have the physical bodies, but they're boys. Uh, and they want to strive with us. They always look at the strive. Uh, well, I know that you don't know a damn thing. I said to Oxymion the other day, look, it's all right with all of your remedies and all of that. I don't have no problem with that. But I know that what we have done as a nation as a people, we have discounted Yah for herbs and every kind of remedy, and we don't pray a damn prayer. So I said, no, I will let my body endure this and go through the process that it will build up not only the, 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 the ability to fight, 
but also above all the faith to believe here yeah. and the confidence. I have no problem with you utilizing the herb because he gave us the herbs. We just eat right and do right and keep our hearts clean and our minds free from the power of Nahasha. We all become practitioners today. And practicing everything, but instead of walking, chalach. Let us walk in the light as we see the light. As our eye and our spiritual, mental, and physical perceptions are open, let us walk in that. Let us halakha. Let that be the course that we go. Let us be the course that we strive. That's what it means, Yisrael. It's not a complicated prescription or, or the ingredients of the prescription. Because we think if someone gets a cold, then that's a sign of a weak body. It's not. If a man gets a cold, then let his body fight. Let, let, let the immune system fight it. Let his own body fight it. Say, all right, come on, virus. I've got something for you. We break down and we become terrified. And we suppress it because we don't want nobody to know. <laughs> <coughs> Unless we become as one of these little ones, like the little children. We're not going into the kingdom. They don't suppress nothing. That's the way we suppress our sins and our wicked ways. We're false pretenders. Hallelujah. Listen now in verse 16, 24, 16. And he that blaspheme, he that nakhab, that speaks with an expression that vilifies the name of Yah, that pierces Yeshua, just like when he hang on the stake, they pierced him at the side. And out came blood and water, the cleansing atonement of Yah. See, we pierce him of flesh. That's what this kala is. We denounce Yahshua. We reject the power of his truth. And we began to speak uh, blasphemy against the name of Yah. You have heard people say, well, if Yah so loved everybody, then why he allowed that to happen? If Yah did that, why is that? Well, well I know I love. Let me paraphrase that properly. Quote, you know God, if he loved everybody, why he allowed that to happen? You know God loved everybody. Why did your damn Baptist God allow it to happen? Why did your damn Methodist God, because they're different than the Pentecostal God, why did your damn white God, or your damn black God, or your damn Jewish God, or your damn Mexican God, or your damn Catholic God, why did they allow it to happen? So it's your damn God, you're in charge of your damn God, you foolish man or woman. And so you want to use Almighty Yah just for your appeasement and to bring about your desire, your passion. I tell you what, my friend, it won't happen. He's not saving your damn wicked sons and daughters. He's going to say, all Yisra'ya, you pray that the house of Yisra'ya is delivered in your shock. Damn your wicked, drunk, thumping, faggot son and your hoish little daughter that's a bull dagger. Damn them all. Reject your truth and make mockery of you. I will, man. I'm not afraid of this wicked generation. I'm not afraid of it. We're praying and don't even pray for the messenger of Yah. Don't even pray for our sister, our brother. Don't even consider the one that is sick. Don't even pray for this man. Don't even take time to get on your knees and pray that you kill him. Don't even call for the hope or the oxy. Let's go pray. It is the damn truth. And so damn superficial. We love our damn God through this belly. I'm not going to stop saying damn. 16. And he that blasphemes the name of Almighty Yahweh, he says, surely be put to death. You damn Jesus thumpers, you're going to die. Did he Allah? He that blasphemes. He that nakab. To pierce the name of Yah and say, Jesus. Well, I speak English. You are a bizarre beast. How do you say the name uh, Netam Yahu, Mr. Netam Yahu, the Prime Minister of Israel. So you speak in Hebrew. How do you say Hallelujah? So what is that? Oh, what is our president's name? Well, his name is Brach. 
Hussein Obama. You babies, do you know the president's name? What's his name? Who can tell me what's his name? What's the president of the United States? What's his name? Say it. Who? Come up here, little pretty thing. Come here. You all listen. Come here. What's the president? Is it not a smart little thing? Come here, pretty thing. How you doing? These are my babies. What's the president's name? Who? Oh, she's speaking Arabic quite well. She's speaking Hebrew. Barack Hussein Obama. That's his name. You don't call him old Jim Bob. He has an Arabic name. His name is Barack Hussein Obama. You don't call Miss Merkel the prime minister of Germany. You don't call her Mary Jo. Well, that's what her name means in America. I don't give a damn what her name means in America. Her name is Merkel. Her name is Mecca. You did not call that man over there, Mr. Mubarak. You didn't call him Mutt Man. You call him Mubarak. You call him Mr. Mubarak. And so they play that lame game. Well, I speak English. Well, what is English? It is an amalgamation of every kind of twisted language that it has been, uh, you know, it's, you, you know in, in English, uh, they say the English speaks such pro proper grammar. And they will say, well, he tis. Well, what is tis? T-I-S? Oh, I thought you say he is. Well, he tis. Oh, he tis. Uh, he tis tomorrow. What is that? The stupidity of this vile language that we call English. And any man that blasphemes the name of Yah that despises it, it is the name of our seal, Yisrael. It is the name that seals us. Hold on for a minute. I'm going to preach today. I want to read this in Revelation, hallelujah, quickly. It is the name that seals us. It says in Revelation chapter 14, verse 1, Yochanan said, I look and lo, the Lamb. He stood upon Mount Sihon. He said, and with him 144,000. 144,000. Did he not say the pure virtuous ones of the house of Yisrael? Though they have not been scarred with the damned, Jesus and the Lord have not given their, have not given their pledge of allegiance over unto the damned Lord, a God. He said, I saw this crowd of these beautiful men of strength. There were 144,000, what? Having his father, having his father's name written in their foreheads. Not just in the forehead of Yahshua HaMashiach, but in their foreheads. What's his name? Yo says, anyone that blasphemed my name, Nakab. That peers the name of Yah and denounces it. Uh, that respects the damn name of Jesus. Uh, because your mom is a damn Baptist. Uh, and your grandmom is a Methodist. Uh, and your aunt is a Pentecostal. Uh, you respect their damn lies. Uh. One writes me the other day. Rhea, what do I do? I don't know what to do. My family, they're going to think I'm crazy. Uh, they, 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 because I will not sit down and eat with them when I denounce that. What do I do? I say, well then hell let them denounce you. Let them speak evil. So what? I said, they spoke evil of Yeshua. He said that they will speak evil of us. Yeah. Grow up. Yeah. You talk about your family, so I gave, gave scripture concerning Matithia, where man's foe should be of his own house. These are your enemies. You think they love you because you sit and break bread and they've taught you love? Hell, they don't know love. Those are your enemies, your own house. Well, you know, I know you say, yeah, but you know, I'm just, you, you know, I ain't going to fight you and try to log you with their wickedness. Well, that's my brother. He loves me. Your brother doesn't give a damn about you. He doesn't even love y'all. Here in his love that we keep the mitzvah of y'all and your damn brother, your sister doing their wickedness and you tell me they love y'all, you are a flat out liar. That's what Nahash says. Oh, I know my son loves me. You're a damn liar. Your son doesn't love you. He doesn't even love himself. Why would you drink cyanide? You know it's going to kill you. You love yourself. You're not going to do yourself like that. I'm not. You think I'm, I'm going to drink poison and kill me? Not me. 
If I die where I can't even walk around the core, let me die that way. And Granny says, I ain't going to kill myself. That's right, old woman. That's right, amen. That's an honor when they live to get old among us. No disregard. She knows that. She knew me before I knew me. She saw me before I saw me. She kissed me before I could ever even appreciate me. She laid hands on me before I knew what hands were. She looked at me and said, boy, looks like his daddy before I even knew who her daddy was. Stop it. We got to get down to the real issue, Yisra'ya. It is Nahash. And that's why we hate Yah. Nahash is an anti hamashiach spirit. And he hates Yah. He hates Yah's instruction. That's why we become angry at Yah. That's why we get upset with Yah, Yisra'ya. He that blasphemed the name of Yah and he that blasphemeth the name of Yah shall surely be put to death. Muth, prematurely you kill. And all the congregation shall certainly stone him. Look now. He says, as well as the gay, the stranger, those that have no inheritance right in Yisrael. Yeah? You tell me, Yah says the stranger shall kill that beast as well? He has come among Yisrael. Yeah? He is dwelling among you. He has no birthright, but he has the birthright. He said, even the strangers and he that, as, as he that is born in the land, the stranger that has no birthright, he shall stone, he shall vilify him, he shall curse that one. It is almost like the stranger see a ruddy kid doing something strange to his mother. And he says, boy, don't do that. Has no social attachment with that individual. I remember as a young man, back then I was just silly and dumb. Still am, still dumb. And I watched this boy throwing rocks at his mother. He was about 15 years old. Here I am, 225, 30 pounds, strong as a bull. I walk up on this boy and say, boy, what are you doing? And she's down there hollering and crying. He's pelting this woman upside her head. I said, come here, woman. I said, why are you throwing rocks at her, boy? That's my mom. I met. I said, you little jackass. I said, throw a rock at me. Because back then you could do that. Today, you know, you have to break one's neck. I wasn't fearful. I said, mama, come here. Why is this boy throwing? You let this boy throw rocks at you? I said, boy, I will break your neck. Yeah, he was a little white boy. When he saw this big black man look at him, I said, I will break your ass, boy. Throw another rock at her. He began to tremble. I'm a good man. Strong man. Strong. He began to tremble. He knew better. And of course, his granddaughter said, I gave him a tongue lashing after that. She had reprieval for that day. Until I left. I was at the laundromat doing our laundry. She had reprieve with that day until I left. No telling what that fool did. Hallelujah. It is the truth. Hallelujah. You boast in yourself. No, I boast in the power of Yah. In all of my ignorance, I boast in his might and his strength. I make my boast in him. I want to deal with this blasphemy. He said, even the stranger who is born in the line, when he blasphemed the name of Yah, he shall be put to death. He shall be put to death. He shall die. And out of this Israelitish woman of the tribe of Dan, the seed that was birthed in her, this Nahash, it brings forth one of the most vilest of repugnance of spirit. And that is to nakha, to blaspheme, to speak reproach against Yah. Well, I know he said that, but you know, he, he, he just said that, but I, 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 know what, I know what to do. You don't know what to do, woman. You're wicked. You don't know what to do, man. When a man is eating at the table of Yah, you will see the strength. When a woman is eating at the table of Yah, I can tell whether you're eating at the table of Yah or at the table of demons, shawdems. When a man eats at the table of Yah, you see his strength. When a man fortifies himself with the right nutrition, you can see that. When a man fortifies himself, you see it. You, you think about those men that lift weights and their bodies are huge. It is not as much about the weights they lift as the nutrition that they eat. 
as they feed their bodies the protein. That's why their bodies look like that. It is not about how much they can live. It is the proper diet. You see it there, Yisrael. You will see what a man is eating the proper diet of truth. You will see the power of the erected nature of that man with great strength. Same thing, Bath of Tizion. When you eat dung, you got to smell like it and act like it. Now those cats may live weeks one hour a day. That's a fact. This all you do? It's just the protein they put in their body. That's it. It's just the protein, the way they eat. It's just the way they eat. Period. Those saying whatever you eat, that's what you are? You ever heard that proverb? So whatever you eat, that's what you are. Whatever you eat spiritually, you can see it. You eat in a certain way naturally. You can see the flab. You can hide it all you want to. But honey, the flab is going to be revealed. You can suck it in with a corset or a girdle. It's still going to be revealed. Hallelujah. It's the way you eat, woman. It's the way you eat, man. Don't get upset with me. Get mad at you. You can tie down all you want to, honey. You cut the breath off all you want to. It's going to bulge out. And so whatever man eats, that's what he is. If he's eating the dainties of hell, that's what he looks like. That's his strength. He has no spiritual strength. He is a pretender. But a man eats with the, in the, at the table of Yahweh, when he sits at the table of Yahshua and eats, he's a strong man. He's a gubber. He's ready to battle. He's always prepared. He knows how to get up and go. He's ready for the fight that is ahead. No harsh will not allow you to do that because it always speaks of one's own ability and one's own strength. That's what Dan, he, he failed to negate that spirit from the house of, of the tribe of Don. To say, you're wicked, you're wrong. You're not performing right. You're not putting up what you should, daughter. Come on, I, come on, get it up. It is the nature of blasphemy. Nakab. When one peers your shoe. When a man put his heart plans to the plow, when he begins to plow, he put his hands to the plow. And he begins to look and be mesmerized with the world. He turns back. He's not even fit for the kingdom of Almighty Yah. He's not. What a man has said, he has walked in the truth. He knows the truth of Yah. He has been a messenger of Yah. He has been a strong man of Yah. And then the Torah says, when a man committed adultery with a woman, spiritually or naturally, he hates his own nephew, Yisrael. How in the hell can he love me? And if you, does Yah love us? Sure he does. He has not, uh, he has not committed a, 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 a sensual pleasure with another nation of people over us. Uh, in all of our filthiness, he still draws us back. Uh, in all of our corruption, he still draws us back. Uh, I don't give a damn what a man did before he come to the knowledge of Yah. I'm talking about men that say they knew Yah and walked in Yah's truth. Uh, and they've done some of the most irreversible uh, uh, damage to the body of Yisrael. Yeah. That my works I do speak for me. That's what's going to speak for us. You need to be quiet. Sit down, man. Sit down, woman. You committed the, the apostate of the uh, adulterous uh, occult prostitute. That's what you've done. Man didn't know you can't charge him. The man comes to the knowledge of truth. You can't pierce your shoe. You can't continue to pierce him in the side. You can't trot him on the foot to say he's not worth anything. You try him on the foot because of your sons and your daughters, because of those that you think you love. Love is truth. That's the foundation of love, truth. Period. It's the deep, the righteousness of yours and everlasting righteousness. It is Torah. His truth is forever. It never ceases, Yisrael. We need to get in the arm and just. Lose the weight. Lose the substance of our mind. I want to talk here a little bit. Come on. It says here in the, book of, in the book of Marcus Lucas, in the book of Luke. That's when these, uh, when the scribes and these ones that think they know Yah, when they began to blaspheme the name of Almighty Yahweh, they blaspheme Yahshua. Luke 3.28. Yahshua says this. Look what he says. You know why? Because they call him the prince of Beelzebub. Did they not? Yes. 
They call your Shua Hamashiach, say, these things you're doing, uh, it is by Belzebub. And we know that Belzebub, Yisrael, it is the power of Hashatan, it is Nahash. He says, they said, you're casting out these demons uh, by a demon. The works that you're doing is by a demon. And so they blaspheme Yah. They blaspheme the word of Yah. You cannot speak against the word of God. It's best to be quiet if you don't know. Shut your damn mouth. You always want to resist the elders and, and try to promote you and, and try to talk them down. You will not. I say this. I've said this all the years we've been here. You know, you know it bothers me because I watch brothers here, men here, to let strangers come and talk them down. You know, that's sad. I let no man talk me down. I say, you ready to battle me? Let's battle. Let's go to the book. Let's, no, 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 no. Not your opinion. Let's go to the book. You know, Octayonia, he said, Reak is one thing about you. You stay, everything you say, it's, it's predicated upon what the book says. I said, let's go to the book. And we let them talk us down. Ah. Uh -uh. Look at what Yeshua says in Mark 3, 28. He says, truly I say to you, or all me, I say to you, all chata, all sin, shall be forgiven of the sons of men. And whatever blasphemy, they shall blaspheme. Listen to that, you hear me? He said, even though they blaspheme, even though Don has blasphemed, all of that shall be forgiven. He said, but there is one now. Yah says, uh, they shall not live that blaspheme. Fiend, the name of Almighty Yahweh. That's why you tell them Jesus' birthday is December the 25th. You tell them congrat. You answer a fool according to the damn folly. You can't speak wisdom to a damn fool. He says, but he that shall blaspheme Against Ruach HaChodash has no forgiveness. When you speak against the power of that name, when you speak against that name, and they will seal his name written in their mayfak, in their foreheads, in their mind. It is what seals our mind, Yisrael. He said, but whosoever blaspheme, Nakab, against Ruach HaChodash has no forgiveness. None. And in danger of eternal damnation, he says, I'm going to damn them all. When a man speak against the Ruach, well, did not Korodai, Tham, and Abarim, when they spoke against Yah's messenger, and say, well, uh, well, well, you ain't the only one that can do this. Yah says, they're going to know that you're my man, Moshe. That's this juvenile generation today. They can see everything, but they can't see that. That's what Nahash does, Yisraya. That's why we can't see ourselves. That's why we don't improve. Those saying the old adage of the Proverbs say, wine gets better with age, doesn't it? So it is with the beauty of a woman. As she gets older, she gets more beautiful. Her walk is much more beautiful. Her, 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 her dynamics uh, speaks volume of wisdom, uh, understanding, uh, and her beauty is the lines uh, or, or all the lines of her face uh, and the great light of maturity that, that emanate from her eyes. Uh, we look at our eyes, they're dark with Nahash uh, and sin and full of wickedness. Uh. We need them uh, all the light of his rejoicing. He said everything will be forgiven, but that when you blaspheme the Ruach, will you say that this is not Yah doing this? Will you say Yah is not in control? Yah was in control of Moshe. And these wicked men rose up against him. I had the dogs to come here. Oh, I know Yah is with you, and you rise up against me, fool. You are a foolish man. You're stupid. We had one that when I met him was nearly 400 pounds. Couldn't stand up here for an hour. Began to lose weight. And all of a sudden with a joke or a clown, uh, he turns against me. And I guarantee he's 500 pounds now. Fat and overweight. He's mad as a prophet. 
When the prophet speak, will you hear what he says? And then he gave me a gift of an expensive pair of shoes. They were like $250. That's expensive. I wore them a few times and I gave them to a friend. They were right, mama. I take care of my shoes. Soul dressing and keep them polished. Never put on a pair unless I polish them. Never. So I gave the shoes to a friend. He gave them to me as a friend, but he really wasn't a friend. But the friend I gave him, gave them to him. That's my friend. Hallelujah. Yeah. So when one blaspheme, Yisrael, that's what Nachash, it caused us to begin to speak against you. Did not those scribes says that you're doing that by the power of demons. That's not of Yah. Oh, he doesn't have the love of Yah in him. He's too hard to... It's a terrible thing to fall into the hands of the living Amma. He is austere, isn't he? And these people lie to people, thinking that you are some kind of little uh, pumpkin seed pump daddy. When a daddy loves his son, he doesn't play with him. He tells him, get up, boy. Go mow the grass. Get off your lazy butt. Get out of this house. You're sitting around all day. Sure, that's what he tells him. These things that they let's play some crunch time. I don't make many friends. That's all right, my whole Diana. You all love me. I'm not, I'm, I am not disturbed because people don't love me. My own natural family has never loved me. I got over that when I was a 23-year-old young man. It has never troubled me. I have never been troubled by that. My natural family, when I began to even talk, Jesus talked to that was a separation. So that has never bothered me. I've never been troubled about that. I don't go to the social events. With your water, I got a ticket and I was the last time. Never went back to another one. Got a ticket after that one and never went back. I don't want their chitlins and pig feet. I don't want to sit and eat their food where they're cooking with pork necks and all of that. I won't do it. You can. I won't. Hallelujah. Who is my family? Your mother's as he that hear the Torah of Yah and do the will of Yah, the same is. So I know who my family is. I know who they are. I know who my sons and daughters and my family, my brother, my sister. I know who they are. I'd rather be with them. Hallelujah. There's no forgiveness of your sins. Hear the instructions that as the word of Yah came unto Ezra, the third, third Ezra. I want you to hear this quickly because I want to move and finish it today. This portion at least. <clears throat> This is when the word of Yah came unto Ezra the prophet. He, came, he gave him these words to instruct the nation. Ezra, third Ezra, th one and five. He says to Ezra, go your way. Show my people their sinful deeds. He says that I want you to show their children their zima. Shall we not show the children their zima, their evil plans, their wickedness? This is what Yah speaks unto the Nobi. And it's one thing that a true prophet does, he always tears down and he rebuilds. You understand that? He says, show their children their wickedness, uh, which they have done against me. My sin is not against my alt, my alt is not against my ach, my achuta. it's against Yah. It's because I have blasphemed Yah, I pierced Yahshua, I despise Yahshua. That is the nature that is one of the tenets of, of the spirit of God. That's why his name is not there. Yah said we can blaspheme but there is one blasphemy that will never be forgiven. We blaspheme Yah. That's why Dan, his heritage, he's going to be restored. He is. But it is for this time, Yisra'ya, that Yah, when you sin, are you restored? When you sin, are you restored? All right then. Hallelujah. Even when Moshe said, if you kill them all, blot my name out. He said, blot it out. Now that's a bold move there, isn't it? Can you talk to him that way? No, you can't talk to Yah that way. Ezra, third Ezra 1, 5, go your way and show my people their sinful deeds and their children their zima, their wicked evil plans, which they have done against me. He says that they may tell their children and their children, children. I want you to hear this now. Yah said, I want you to tell my children, my house Yisra'ya, their sin, and what they've done to me against me. Well, what have we done against Yah? It says uh, in, the, in the 22nd verse of the same chapter, 
when Yah speaks unto this prophet, 3rd Ezra 1 and verse 22. When he speaks unto this noble, he says to him, how long shall I bear their iniquity, their sins, their wickedness? Because I've done them so much tough, and yet I tolerate them. Has he not been tough to us? He says in verse 22 though, he said, this says the almighty Yahweh. When you were in the wilderness in the river of the Amorites, he said, when you were athirst, he said, and you blaspheming, you blaspheme my name. In the midst of the rivers or the yam or the stream or the torrent flow or the Amorites or the Egyptians. In the midst of the course of this world, we have blasphemed the name of Yah. We have spoken evil against the name of Yah. We have done evil against the name of Yah, Yisrael. Yah says, I did not, I did not sin far upon you for your blasphemies. He said, I didn't kill you. We blaspheme the name of your shoe for a damn Jesus Christ. Yah says, I didn't kill you. He said, I didn't kill you. I didn't kill you. I didn't kill you. He said, but I cast a tree, your shoe, in the midst of that bitter water. If you allow the tree of life in the midst of your damn bitter heart and your bitter ways, that's what you need. And made the river sweet. Even at the torrent, the torrential flow of the flow of the river has ran against us. Yah has made this sweet. He has caused your sure great is he that is in me. We are the testimony of your sure Hamashiach. We are the power of that true living word in us. That we will not blaspheme the name of Omar Yah. Verse 24. What shall I do to you, O Jacob? Is he not talking to Yisrael? He said, what shall I not do to you, Yahuda, the Benjamites, and Yahuda? What shall I do to you, Yahuda, who will not obey me? He's asking us, what should I do to you? You have not obeyed me, what should I do to you? As almost our parents says, which one you want? I'm going to get you. You can get it now, you can get it later. He says, I will turn to other nations. I will turn to other people. Strangers born among you. Uh, and those will I give my name. He says, and they shall keep my pekuds. All that which pertains unto my statutes, my Torah. Why, uh, seeing you have azab. He said, you have forsaken me. You have departed from Torah, no love for prayer, no love for Yah. You have neglected the counsel of Yah. He says, you have, uh, you have azab. You have apostated the ways of Yah. You have spoken against Yah. He says, you have forsaken me. Yah says, because you have forsaken me, I will forsake you also. Don, he has forsaken. He has, he has forsaken us. Listen, he says, I will forsaken you also. When you desire me to be hasid or to be merciful to you, uh, I shall show no mercy upon you. We don't know Yah that way, do we? We don't think that that's the way he operates, but that is the way, Yisra'ya. When you look for mercies, I will show none. You have been unmerciful uh, to your ach, your hot. And when you look for it, uh, Yah says, I'm not going to show you one scintilla of mercy he says, whensoever you shall call upon me, uh, he said, I will not, Shemach, I will not hear you, uh, for you have told me, you have, uh, you have uh, defiled, you have become unclean and impure, you have defiled your hands with sin, with blood, uh, and your feet are swift. To commit murder, that's what blasphemy will do, that's what Nahash will cause you to murder. What is the murder of Yah? You that hate? You surround Yah without a cause. You pray for the most vilest of wicked and you don't even remember the hope that's struggling and suffering that's afflicted. A quiet, huh? He said, your feet are swift to commit murder. He that hates his brother, his sister without a cause, commits murder. You kill, you are murderer. You are murderer, and the commandment says, Thou shalt not commit murder. 
You are a murderer. You're much more vile than one that goes boom, boom, boom. You're much more vile than that. The power of blasphemy and the strength of Nahash, the superficial lie in your mind to make you think you're all right. We better get this on right, Yisrael. Take off this filthy garment that has been spotted with our own flesh. He said, you have not you, y'all says this, I want you to hear this in Ezra 127. You have not as it were, th- you, you have not if as it were, you have forsaken me. See, when you think we're forsaken, y'all, but he says, uh, but you have forsaken your own self, says Yahweh. You think you've forsaken me? No, you've forsaken your own self. You think you're doing y'all wrong? You're doing yourself wrong. You think you're coming against him? No, you're coming against your own self, uh, he said, it is not as much as you think you've forsaken me. You have forsaken your own self. That's what Nahash does to you. You have rejected the chief cornerstone. You have rejected the precious stone. It's not the chief stone in your life, Yisrael. It's that damn stony heart of yours that must be ripped out. It's your foul heart. Your sin is engraved in that damn stony thing. It's sad. It's sad. When we, doesn't, when we do not change from day to day. It's sad when we go back to the tables of vomit of demons and shot them, shot them and eat from that. You go back to your own filthy ways every day. It's sad. The beauty of y'all is expressed in our countenance and our look and our facial and our body and our walk and our talk. It's expressed that way. His strength. Even when old granny couldn't even hardly get up, she would get up and say, I got joy, baby. I got joy down in me. I got joy. And we're so full of wickedness and corruption. So full of nahash that we will blaspheme. Yeah. We will speak against the ruach. When one points out our wicked ways, we, we get angry. We get upset. Show me my sins, y'all. Yeah. Correct me. It's almost when one sees one's commitment to a certain thing and they don't have the will to do it. Let me tell us all, Yisrael, uh, nothing is going to take a will, a pleasure to do anything we do. I don't care what it is. You want to lose weight, it's going to take a will, not a damn pill. It takes will. You got to have pleasure. That's what will is, pleasure. You got to have delight. You got to love you. I don't care what it is. If you have no will, you can take all the damn pills you want to. It takes a will. And a will is the pleasure. And once one gets the pleasure, you will see a radical change. And when you get pleasure in serving Yah and not Nahash, you will see a change. You will see a change. And that's the fact. Because you have no pleasure in serving Yah, and you speak against Him, why He had to say that because that's what you need. I said that because that's what you need today. I said that because that's your handicap. That is the, your Nahash. That's what binds you. That's what controls your mind, woman. No? And you need to hear it. Hallelujah. Yah says, you have not forsaken me, but you've forsaken yourself. That's who you're angry with. You're angry with you. You haven't forsaken Yah. That's what Nachash does. When Adam and Hava, when they forsook Yah, they did not forsake Yah. They forsook the blessings of Yah. And anytime you do that, that's what Nachash does. It wants you to forsake the blessings of Yah. That's what it does. The berachaya, the riches of his static in his joyfulness. You see what the letter said? There are those that don't have anything. And I thought other night it was cold. I said, Yeah, there are folks sleeping on the street, and I know it. It's not just a few, there are millions of people in this country. And it was born downright chilly. I said, We're here. Can you imagine in Chicago? They haven't bathed in days and cannot bathe. And no one gives them a chance. I say, yeah, thank you for this word. I don't mind 
taking the chainsaw and laying it down, the hammer on that wood over there. I don't mind separating the piles. I don't mind. Not me. Not one bit. And I don't get tired. Once I get the rolling, I don't get tired. Cannot go around the Torah of Yah. The spirit of this blasphemy. Revelation. Gilyana chapter 16 verse 9. I don't care what Yah speaks to you. He can beat the hell out of you. You're not going to repent. Well, that's what it says in Revelation chapter 16 verse 9. When the Melach poured the vial upon the sun to scorch men with fire. And that's what his word is. That's what Yah. The, the, the Melach is the messenger of Yah. And so as the son of righteousness has arisen, the son of his righteous Torah arise out of the messenger. He caused that to be that fire, the Ush of Yah, to be poured upon you. And it doesn't make us repent. That's Nachash. And that is Dan because he did not judge the people and bring them to the knowledge of Yah's truth. Revelation 69, it says, When the fire was opened and men were scorched with great heat. And look at what they did. And they began to blas they blaspheme their na'ats. They had contempt. They despised. They hated. They began to na'ats. What? The name of Almighty Yahweh. And that's what we do. We have contempt for him. When he began to, when the fire of his truth began to burn down in these oh, wicked houses of ours. We get straight unto, uh, unto Nahash and say, I'm a, I'm a God. You're going down to the craters of hell, God. And even in the most severe circumstances, uh, they began to uh, they began to blaspheme well, the name of God, which had power over these plagues, uh, and they repented not to give him uh, Kabul. They did not say, I'm ashamed, Yah. They did not give Yah honor. We're not a nation that repent when he corrects us. Uh, that's why Don, he hasn't repented because uh, when Yah corrects him. We're not a people that when Yah shows us our weakness, we, we repent. We're not that kind of a nation. He says, and the fifth milag poured out the vial upon the seat of the beast. Now, when he pours it out upon Nahash, the beast, the Tanim, the beast, that's what Nahash is when the serpent of Begali, when the spirit of Begali speak to your mind, it says, and when he did that, your kingdom become dark. It become hoshak. It become full of darkness. And you began to gnaw in the pains of your, of your corruption and your wickedness. And look what happens even in the midst of all of that. And they blaspheme. They naats Yahweh of the Hashemam. Because their pains and their sores. And they repented not of their deeds. They didn't repent. We don't repent. We don't repent of our actions and our ways. That's what Nahash does. And he poured out uh, the vial upon the kingdom of the beast. We are beasts. We are Nahash. We are the serpent nature because our tongue is like a poison asthma. Who can control the tongue? From out of that tongue come bitter and sweet water, lies and truth, every kind of damn corrupt thing. This is for Yisraya. This is for our need. This is for our healing. This is for our bread, Yisraya. We're not getting by. We're not going to get by. You think you are, but we're not. We got to make a hundred. Okay, you know me tells us that all the time. 99.9 will not do. We must be complete. We must be tanim, whole, complete, fullness. We must be complete. And the only way that's in Yoshua HaMashiach. And he poured out the vial. What is that vial? The judgment upon this beast nature. And we began to contort our bodies and our mouths and our actions and all of that. It doesn't bring us to repentance, Yisraya. We don't repent. We do not repent. We're worried about Dan's name not being in the book. You better make sure your name is not blotted out of the book. 
We worry about Dan, the tribe of Dan not being there in your name. I'd rather my name be in the book. I'm not worried about the tribe of Dan. Dan will take care of itself. Yeah, I will take care of Dan. When he poured out his instructions of his judgment upon that beast nature of ours, we rise up and we blaspheme and we don't repent. No, y'all wouldn't do that to me. I don't do what them other ones do. You do worse than what they do. You're much more wicked than them. You're more wicked than the damn Jesus thumpers and the Christmas gatherers. Because you got a self-righteousness about you. They just said they got a pure ignorance and you're so damn self-righteous. No, I want y'all to be righteous. I want his sadiq, his character in me. Why? Because it's one thing about the nature of the character of y'all. It constantly judges us and corrects us in our walk. It shows you how vile, how immature you are. And there's nothing like a stupid, immature man. Nothing more virile than a stupid, immature woman. It is for real, man. I tell her I don't blink. And so sometimes she thinks that. I say, okay, I will show you. And after about a minute, you know, she's worried about blinking. I'm not worried about blinking. I'm just, I'm going to show. I'm just looking in her eyes. And I don't have to blink. And after about two minutes, she thinks she's going strong. And so she gets that kind of confidence on her face. And the next thing she No, I don't blink. I'm not going to take a back seat to this wicked world. When y'all pours out that fire on that beast's arse, you're going to cuss him out. You're going to make kala. That's what he does. When he pours the fire on you, when the fire began to burn, baby, you got to get up and run. And we don't make repentance. It is the nature that is so vile, Yisrael. We blaspheme the Ruach HaChodesh. Yeah, there's no forgiveness. Damn the Holy Ghost. I speak of the Ruach. I speak of my Abba. I speak of his mind. I speak of his principles. They're lively. They cause my heart to be filled with gladness and joy. And that gives me strength in the midst of all my chaotic battles. Damn the Holy Ghost. What is the Holy? What is the Ghost? It's a damn demon. That's what a ghost is, a damn demon. They've dressed up a damn demon and call it the Ruach, the, 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 the very nature of Yah, his life. That's what the Ruach is. It is the living power of Yah. It's his truth. Of, in, the, in the testimony of Yahshua that comes alive, every time we hear that name, the Ruach of that life of Yah speaks out. Not this damn thing the Pentecost to sell you. What the damn Baptists sell you or the damn Methodists or the damn apostate apostolics. The damn church of God and their Christ. The damn church of God. They have lied to us. They have lied. They have hoodwinked us. They have raped our sons and our daughters. And we must take vengeance. We must stand up like mighty soldiers, mighty warriors of Yah. We're not taking no prisoners at all. Yah says when you go in there, kill a God, damn it, kill every damn thing. Kill the damn babies, kill them, kill every damn thing. Kill them all. Kill them all, damn it. Don't even spare the card of the damn youngins. Uh, kill the last one of them. Kill the babies. Rip them out the mammy's womb. They're doing it today. Kill them all. And Nahash says, uh, I'll save. Ech. I'll save that which oppose Yah. And that's what we save. But yeah, there was a mess messenger. Shamu Yah said, hell, something ain't right here. I hear something here. Uh-uh-uh. No, sir. Uh-uh. He said, take him out and kill him. We don't think that uh, yeah. the storms kill, don't they? Sure they do. The cold kill, don't they? You find someone froze. 
Well, we trust nature. Well, nature kills, doesn't it? The cold weather, hot weather kills. Mamas like their babies in cars. 15 minutes come back, the baby has dehydrated and dead in the heat of the summer. This is a stupid generation. It's stupid. It is an insane generation. They got a false image of y'all. He said, kill them all. Kill every last one of them. They will not hearken to my voice and repent. We don't repent at the hearing of the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, Yisrael. He said the plagues were upon them. Hallelujah. Their pains and their sores and they repented not. In the 21st verse of the same chapter, listen to this. Hallelujah. When they made lack. And there fell upon men great hells. Great hell out of Hashemaim. Every stone the weight of a talent. The great weight of this, of this, of this time we're in. We're weighted down with everything, are we not? House payment, rent payment, car payment, car insurance, food bill. I went yesterday. I didn't even have the funds. And when the woman told me what that was going to cost, I wanted to say, put that back in. Take that off. Take that off. I couldn't believe it. I said, that's, I know that's $20, but what in the world? I know what I spent for my little ones, but well, that was $10 just for that. I want to say, take that off. See, okay, take that off. Take that off too. Yeah, I wanted to pull one of those, take that off. No, I wouldn't have been ashamed because uh, I was going to be ashamed one way or the other having enough money and not having enough money. Sure. So what difference does it make? Take that off. Take that off. It is right, my friend. He says, and the great hell fell out of the heavens, every stone of the weight of a talent, the great weight, and the great pressures on our mind, the oppression and the great battles of Nahash. It weighs us down and we're so heavy. Nobody knows. The trouble I've seen is the same house. You're weighted down. You're weighted down with oppression and sin. Your iniquity is like a cloud over you. I know what this represents. It has more. It has a multiplicity of revelation and phases and actual things. You understand? And so with the messenger of Yadim Iraq, which is the messenger, when he calls the very weight of their sin, of their own iniquity, of their own own to be poured out upon them, it's going to be grievous and it's going to be heavy because how are you going to redeem yourself? No man is going to be able to redeem himself. You're not going to be able to buy and sell. And that's a fact, Israel. You have no power to redeem you. And when men, when the weight of that, they blaspheme the name. They blaspheme Almighty Yahweh because of the plagues of the hell and the plagues thereof, they were exceedingly great because of the great, enormous pressure. People got such pressure on their minds today. They're bogged down with pressure. Pressure with a $900,000 house payment. They have no time for children, no time for husband, no time for wife. No time for nothing. No time for ya. Other than that kind of great bondage. When Master Yo hit that clock, when Master Yo say crunch time, baby, you got to be on Master Yo's crunch time. When he say hit it, you better hit it. And the weight and the pressures and the great agony. When that began to filter upon this nation, it's coming upon this dirty whore. She's the dirty. America's a wicked whore. She's a prostitute. She sells your sons and daughters. I read a piece of an article this morning. I wanted to read it. It says, one of the most educated generation, this generation, under the greatest pressures of debt. I remember... 20 years ago at the barber shop. And this young man was boasting he was a graduate of UNC Chapel Hill. And of course I hate that I did not interact with that man that day. I can be somewhat of a character. And he's boasting about what he has, his position, 
He's talking about his $40,000 Lexus. And I wanted to get up and say, Sir, you seem to be a bright man, are you not? Oh, you look so, so intelligent. And, and you went to that prestigious university? Yeah. That is somewhat of a tremendous feat, isn't it, man? Oh, yes, I went to UNC Chapel Hill. I graduated. I'm working in the banking industry. Ah! Oh. But, sir, I have, I'm a poor man. I have a question to ask you. You have a $40,000 car? Oh, yes, I have a Lexus. This cat is boasting. I said, me want to ask you one question, my friend. You went uh, and paid that kind of money for, you call it an education, to make yourself a fool, to buy a $40,000 car, and you work. For the man, I farm man. I grow food from the ground. I, I guarantee the whole place would have shut up. I would have talked like that too. I would have talked just like that. Oh, look at us. See how quiet you get? We're fools. Will has made us fools to think that a thing is going to satisfy us. It is not. That's what Nahash tells you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the nature of this anti-spirit. Revelation 13, 5. I've got a few verses I want to read here. You all bear with me now. Revelation 13, 5. And this is the rise of this anti-Hamashiach spirit. It comes from Nahash. We can see when Hashatan said, the day you defy Yah, you become as a ruler of your own destiny. That's what he said. And so we see the combination of this in Revelation 13 verse 5. Um, it says, and there was given unto him this one that rose up out of the midst of the nations. And he began to speak great things. And our mouths, our feth speak great things, don't they? Huh? We speak grandizing things in Revelation chapter 13 verse 5. He began to speak great things. That's why the tribe of Dan, that tribe is not mentioned. And if we blaspheme the Ruach, your name is not going to be mentioned. And the things out of his mouth, he speaks great things. Uh, and he began to speak blasphemy, discontent. And power was given unto him to continue three and a half years, four and two months. And when he opened his mouth in blasphemy uh, against Yah, what? To blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. If we open our mouths to blaspheme against Yah, what? We are the heritage of Yah. We can't speak against Yisrael. And you hate Yisrael without a cause. You put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. You say that is tav and that which is evil. You extol the wicked as being tav and then you... You, you, you reduce the Sadiq, the righteous of Yah, as though that they are nothing. You take great uh, euphemism of excitement in hearing what the wicked are doing, but yet you don't want to hear that this a hope prayed all night, or, or they've been in their prayer praying for this ach all night. We don't want to hear that. No one wants to do that. No one wants to. You, you think you want to come in here and pray all night for him, just lay before Yah? Hell, ain't nobody going to do that. You won't even mention that. And if I say that, we get upset. Because it's not in your will, it's not in your heart, it's not in your ruach. You don't give a damn. You think you do. Damn you, little phony tears. And that's a fact. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I, I'm not going to sugarcoat anything for us. We are missing the mark. We're missing the passing grade, Yisrael. We got time to sleep and eat and lay on our lazy arse, but we, we don't have time for it. What a place you can come. I remember when I was in Africa, that little sister, we were ignorant, but you were here all night long, and that's the truth. Right there in the tabernacle, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, she would be crying out. Beautiful little woman. And every morning her husband would get up to work. They had one child. They had a one little room, it wasn't much. Where Hermione stayed, the raw sewer was running down the street like this. Come on. 
And he was ashamed of, for what? Get out of my face, man. Do you want to take a bath? And I say, man, get out of my face. If you don't get out of my face, I'll knock you out. Now, don't trouble me with that. You don't take one. So what? I will be here 30 days. I'm gone. Now, get away from me, man. And I would see that little sister. She would get up. She would take care of her little house and her little son. He was always, when service started, he was in there sitting with her. And her husband would get off late. I would watch the woman go out. And she would see her husband off. And it was a strange thing because that was, not, that was taboo in their society for him to embrace her and give her a kiss. He would get on that bus. It'd be late that evening. I would sit, and I would watch. He would come home. She would be out there waiting for him when he come home. Just standing there. And she would embrace him. He, and they would walk back to the house. Service started that night. And after service, you hear something just mourning in there. You, what in the world? And it would be her crying and weeping and praying unto Yah. And then six in the morning, seven, I would be up early in the morning. You would watch her. She would be out there with him standing, the baby in bed. Every morning, every morning. There was no pretense in that. Catching the bus there is not like catching the bus here. You understand? He would wait for the bus. He would get on the bus. Before he get on the bus, she would embrace him. She would hug him. And then when the bus leaves, she would wave him off. And she would go back. And every evening, she's out there again waiting for him to come home. I said, ah, that's all right. I like that. Yeah. It was not a night harder that that woman wasn't on her face before y'all. We become at ease in Zion. Nahash speaks to us. We're lazy as hell. And the ones that don't do a damn thing, they, they're the ones that think they're so spiritual. Yeah. I've had them to come in. Well, you know, well, you know, nobody's praying. Well, get your fat rump over there and pray then. You're not the way for nobody. Yeah. You Jezebel, you hypocrite woman, the last one. Well, you know, you know, I'm used to praying. That greedy woman didn't know how to pray. All she wanted to do was eat. Get over there and pray then. Nobody stopped you from that. I've had them come in, well, you know, I want to pray. Well, that's at the top. And I can, no locks on these doors here. We got one here. We got another one upstairs that you can go to either one and pray all night long. You won't have no complaints with me. You see, the arrogance of Nehash, it literally speaks villainy against Yah and that which is of Yah. And that's why we so easily speak against Yisra Yah. We can speak against, we are, we, we are the words that Yah use, it's, a, I, I, it's, it's the word, we are special people. It is, it is the word, Sagula, Sagula. It is a nation of people that Yah has filled with his great riches uh, to make them above all nations. That we are special people, we are peculiar people. That's what we are. And we don't buy that. Oh, we buy what the whores, Paris, Hilton, and all of them tell us. We buy what the lies of the filthy, but we don't buy what Yah says. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And that's the truth, Yisrael. I want to read something here. I think it's important. Hallelujah. We can open our mouths with blasphemy against Yah. Quickly turn to Eo Job. I, I want you to hear this. It says, Job 26, verse 13. I want you to hear this because I want to bring something else into play. It says, By Yah's Ruach, he sifra or he garnished or made bright. By his Ruach, he garnished the heavens, the Hashem Am. It is hand formed. We must understand that thing that's in us. Uh, his form, his hand formed the crooked Nahash. Yah's hand formed that thing in you. He formed Nahash. He is the one that formed the serpent and that beastly nature in us he formed it he shows the strength of his nature and the strength of his righteousness we are a nation of Yah we must be sealed yeah. everyone must be sealed everyone of the tribe of Don everyone of the tribe of is the tribe everyone of the tribe of Ruban we all must be sealed Yisrael we all must be sealed and there's only a way that there's this affixation or this affix of the seal of Yah. Only one thing is exemplified in us in other words seal. It says in 1 Corinthians. I'm sorry, 1 Chronicles or 1 Dibri Chayamim. 1 Chronicles chapter 16. 
It says, when David, chapter 16, verse 2, 1 Chronicles 62. When David had made an end of all of the offering of the Allah, the offerings of Yah, the burnt offerings uh, and the shalom offering, uh, it says, he, yeah, he, he brought a salutation uh, unto Omar Yah. He blessed him. He said, he, barak, he, bar he blessed, he blessed, he, barak, he blessed the people. In the name of Almighty Yahweh. That's how he sealed the people. He sealed their minds. In Almighty Yahweh's name. Not in the name of Jesus the Lord. When he finished all of his offering. He sealed it all in the blessed name of Yahweh Almighty. And that is how we are sealed Yisra'ya. Our mind are sealed up. He has sealed up Yisra'ya until the day of redemption. Our names are sealed unless. We have the nature of Don, this Nahash, that we blaspheme the mighty name of Almighty Yahweh. There's only one comfort that we're going to enjoy in these kids, these times of the end. Do you understand what it is? It's simple. Can I show it to you? All right, in the book of Yeshaya, Isaiah. Hallelujah, Isaiah chapter 8. There's only one comfort. To us that have the Yare, the fear of Yah. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 15. It says, And many among them shall stumble. You hear that? He says, Rab, many abundantly. We don't consider ourselves among the many. He said, Many shall stumble, or Kashal, they shall be weak and feeble. They shall not exercise in the strength of the living Torah. They're going to be easily overthrown, subdued, and coming under the power of Nahash. Of Nahash. He said, and they shall not fall, they shall fall. They shall fall to the violent death of sin, they shall fall. And he says, they're going to be Shabbat, they're going to be broken, Yisra'ya. They're going to be crippled. We are crippled people. We're crippled spiritually. We're crippled physically. And many shall be Shabbat, shall be crippled, and they shall be Yahosh, they shall be snared. We've been snared by every trick of, uh, of Nahash, of the serpent, uh, of our own nature. And they shall be taken, or Locha, we shall be seized upon, brought in the captivity. Our minds are brought under the captivity of, uh, of this Nahash. We have no will of the will of Yah Yisraya. He tells us in verse 16, he says, Bind up. Sarah, bind up what? The testimony. The confirmation of what has been prophesied and spoken. Bind up the testimony. And he tells us to hatam, to seal. To seal. To seal the Torah among my limuds. My disciples, those that are taught, the Torah must be bound in our bosom. It must be Yisrael. We must bind the Torah. We have bound Nahash to speak against Yah, to blaspheme him, to blaspheme his name, and to speak with a haunting disregard and respect of Almighty Yah. And we do that in our actions and our deeds. He would that men everywhere will lift up Khaldor's hand and make pala. We don't give a damn. Whether we pray in here, and I'm speaking to us specifically, in our homes, we flat out don't give a damn. Yeah. You don't make excuses for Kmart. Got a dollar. Make excuses for that. Yeah. Don't get mad at me, that's all right. Yeah. Don't even try me out there. Walmart takes your last dollar. Shoot it down. Mr. Mark say, bring it here. Bring it on. And you bring it on. Hallelujah. Yeah. All of the devil gets mad at me. You got the spirit of the devil, you will get mad at me. I'm almost finished, y'all. Here's, here's something that I, as I read and study, it's in Baruch. 
Yah says to seal the Torah in my Lemud. Did he not say that in Yeshua 18, 16, 8, 16? Bind up the testimony. Did he not say that? Let's say that. Now this is what Baruch says. 23. Second Baruch 23. He says, Now Yisra'ya, however, remember Zachar, everything which Yah commanded you. And seal. He told us to seal up the Torah, right? In Yeshua. He says, seal it in the interior of your mind. That's where you seal it. You get this in your heart. You let this be real, Yisra'ya. We can seal up every kind of Nahash spirit, can't we? People remember what someone did to them 10 years ago, 15 years ago. They remember that. But they can remember, as the old folks would say, I'll say it the way they would say, the goodness, quote, goodness and mercies of Almighty Yah on yesterday, unquote. They can remember some of the most damnable Nahash. Out of the gates of hell, out of the darkness of the depths of wickedness. They retain it. They retain it. But they can't retain the beauty of Yah's mercies. They can retain what someone did. That was one they came here because I guess I didn't esteem them or, or lift them up. Well, they have literally, two of them, they literally cut me off. That's all right. That's all right, Yisrael. Th th their monies will not stop anything. We were here before they ever sent a dime. And we shall be here until Yah's time. You understand? They are weak and beggary. That's why they do what they do. Now they will contact you and say, well, uh, I will show you that I'm better than what uh, he perceived of me. They're wicked. And so that's why they will, will try to uh, propagate uh, their own worth by giving you a gift. Now why not give me a gift? Send it to me. Send it to the messenger of Yah. They're wicked. They're wicked. They're wicked. They're wicked. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to read this account out of the book of Hanak. Then I'm going to close here, all right? In the book of Hanak, Hanak 91. And this is the messenger of Yahs. He corrects his children. We are the children of the Nobi, the prophet. Hanak. The 91st chapter, verse 7. It tells us when Chata or sin and La'atz, when oppression, when we are pressed, afflicted, oppressed, depressed, suppressed, when we are held under the charge of Nahash, when sin, oppression, hear this, and blasphemy. Everyone blasphemed the name of Yah. We blaspheme his Hamashiach when blasphemy and injustice increase. Crime, we will speak and lie against Yisrael without our conscience being affected. And the reason we can do that because our conscience may even see it with our own wickedness, with the hard iron. Crime, iniquity, Iniquity is ovon, ovin. When one is not subject to the Torah of Yah, bind the Torah in our interior of our mind, Yisra'ya. Iniquity and tome uncleanliness shall be committed and increased likewise. Then a great plague shall take place from Hashem Am upon all these, those that operate that way. When we blaspheme, yeah, there's a plague, there's a death, there's a sickness of one's mind. I'm telling you, you don't compromise, yeah, with fools. You don't do it. I don't care who it is, Yisrael. Yeah. Even when my natural, they came here for a purpose, I began to rebuke. I said, woman, you don't come here that way before my presence. You cover yourself. And they made haste to make sure. Then stay long. You don't come in my presence that way. Look at you. Well, can I say something? That's your problem. You talk too much. You need to shut your mouth and listen. 
What you have to say is not even of any value. It has no substance. <laughs> I said to, I believe, Yosipi, I said, you know what? The person said when I said that, okay, I'll be quiet. You don't. I'll be quiet. Well, when they talk like that, it calls a different approach to come. All right, you talk like that then. Okay, be quiet. Listen to me. I got the substance. You don't have it. Oh, can I hug you? I don't hug women. I don't like hugging men's wives. Don't hug me. I'm not weak in that area. I stand for Yah. I'm not weak. You can be. I'm not weak. I'm in the army of Yah. I'm a soldier. A warrior. And the cause is greater than me. Hallelujah. He says the Kadosh one master shall emerge with wrath. His Harun. That's the fierce anger of wrath. And plagues in order that he may execute judgment upon the earth. Verse 8 of Hanach 91. In those days, injustice shall be cut off from its source. A succulent fountain from its root. He says, likewise, la'at, uh, the oppression. The people are going to be crushed. Pressed down, pressed upon. Not only oppression, this is the very composition of Nahash. Oppression. And he uses the word mirma or deceit. Deceit. This guile was not the mouth to start hush a full of guile and subtlety. That is what mirma is. It is full of deceit. This is the nature of Nahash. This subtlety of feigned, beguiling words. They shall be destroyed from underneath Hashem am. And all that which is come, is is coming, with the heathen shall be surrendered. Now listen to this. And the towers shall be inflamed with fire. Their strong, their strong pillars of strength. And removed from the whole earth, they shall be thrown into the judgment of fire and perish in the Ebra, the wrath, the indignation of Yah and the force of eternal judgment. Then, see, when that nature is destroyed, when it is brought down, only then, then the righteous one, Yeshua HaMashiach, shall arise from his sleep. And the wise one, O Maria, shall arise. Hear this. And he shall be given unto them the people. And through his roots, through the root of his love, through his roots of oppression, shall be cut off. See, that spirit shall be cut off, Yisrael. To the power of Yeshua HaMashiach. This is what oppresses us. Nachash. It is that spirit. Because we don't make the proper assessment and judgment upon ourselves. And we will judge ourselves. We will have no need for anyone to judge us. You better stop your murmuring and complaining. You better stop your words of drawing on your demon power. You're muttering and always complaining. What you speak against Yisrael, I speak that against you. Say you are a dirty bastard. That's what I call me. You're a dirty, wicked bastard, man. You're wicked. You're corrupt. Yeah. I talk to me like that all the time, and that's the truth. I'm not lying to you. Because you're going to stand before the judgment seat of Almighty Young. Yah says, and sinners shall be destroyed by the sword. They shall be cut off together with who? The blasphemers. That's who's going to be cut off. All sinners with the blasphemers. And out of Don comes this power of blasphemy to blaspheme the name of Yah. Your Christmas, your Easter's, your pagan lives, uh, leave them alone. They're proper for Jesus' thumpers uh, to celebrate them because you did it. You did it in your days. Now leave it alone. 
I'm not going to teach no message on Christmas. Damn Christmas. Or Easter. I'm not going to waste my time on Easter. Leave them alone. Let them celebrate the rabbits and the eggs. Well, their little babies, their children are giving over the hell. Y'all say, I'm going to destroy. I will curse their children. Down to the third and fourth generation of the fathers that hate me. The fathers hate y'all. The mamas hate y'all. What do you expect? Sinners shall be destroyed by the sword. They shall be cut off altogether with the blasphemers in every place. And those who design oppression and commit blasphemy shall perish by the herop, the knife, the sword of Yah. You better watch your mind. You better watch how you bite your shua as he rides in the fierceness of Yah's great anger and terror. And you trying to circumvent that? You trying to stop him from destroying the wicked? He's going to destroy the blasphemers and the sinners. I don't care if it's your mama blaspheming or your daddy. He's going to destroy them. But sinners, he'll destroy them all. Close with this. Moshe, his battle with Almighty Yah concerning the nation of Yisrael and their wickedness. He said, Yah, if you do that, blot my name out. Yah loved Moshe. But Yah said, okay, I'll tell you what. I'll spare them this time. But I want to give you a word of comfort and assurance. He says in the book of Exodus, Shemoth. Chapter 20, 33, 32, verse 33. And Yah says to Moshe, Whosoever has sinned against me, him will I maha. I'm going to exterminate, eviscerate, obliterate. I'm going to blot out of my sefer. I'm going to blot out his name. Exodus 32, 33. We that sin against Yah, you sin by the nature of Nahash. And that is where it arrives and arises out of the nature of Dan because no judging, no judgment. And anytime you're not judged, Nahash waits at the door. Did not Yah give uh, Adam a Torah? He did. Of every tree, you can eat freely. But of that tree, of Tav and evil, don't even touch it. And he gave him charge over the body. His issue. And they defied almighty Yah. And when they did that. Nahash. And the first sign of Nahash. Was the power of blasphemy. With Cain and Hebel. When he rose up. And he killed his brother. See that's what comes out of the loins. Of Nahash. That's why you hate your brother. Or your sister without a cause. Because you're a murderer. And Yah says I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill your babies. Because you hate me. And that's a fact, Yisraeli. You mothers, you train your children in the absence of the avat, in the way that is right. They are children. Their little damn mouth should not be smart. You need to crack that arse. I don't care who you are. They should not walk with a little smart mouth. Thinking they got a little manly spirit. You bust that buttocks. I don't, now that I don't like about children. I don't like that. I don't like to see them get whippings either. But you train them in the way of Yah. When they're old, they will not depart. You let it go un unnurtured and see what's going to happen. You don't deal with it to see what's going to happen. You just let them do it and watch what's going to happen. That's why we are children, are we not? That, that's why Yah can't let, leave us to ourselves. A child left to himself brings shame. And that's why we bring so much shame. Because we love, I want to be by myself. I don't want to be by myself. I want to be around Yisra Yah. I, I'm not, I, I, I'm, I'm social and I'm a so, man is a social individual. If a line is social, then, uh, then we ought to be social. The big prize today have three or four males and they're social. They rob each other. They, they cling to each other. When it comes time for the hunt, they're on. Their money is on. Their money is on. The females can't bring down the Cape Buffalo like the males. They cannot do it. Because big males may weigh 500 pounds. That's 2,000 pounds on you. You got four of them. Best she's going to do is 300. She's going to do 300 pounds. She's bad. But he's bad to the bone. She's bad. 
but he's bad to the bone. Even they are social. And he made us to be social, to interact, to be a part of each other. When I was a young, stupid fool, I didn't want nobody coming around me. But I didn't like it. I knew it was wrong. I didn't like being like that. It was stupid. I didn't like being like that. And the man that I was on, he pointed out, look at that silly boy. He's a boy. He called me a boy in front of my woman. I didn't fight him because I cared for what he said. I knew what he said was wise, and he was telling the truth about me. What did you do? I went and cried. Found my little secret place and just wept like a little boy. To one day he said, look at, he's not even acting where he's at. I ain't going back there. I don't want to go back there. Silly boy. I don't want to go back there. Uh-uh. I ain't going back there. Not me. So we must care, Yisrael. That's why you don't find the name of Dan. Yosef has always been a name that has been interchangeable with the name of, of uh, Ephraim. With Ephraim. And so we find that in Revelation 14 where the name Dan is not there. There's one more aspect of that it needs to be taught. I didn't teach this today the way I wanted to, Yisrael. But you, uh, you take it over, you all take it over and teach it and listen, whatever way that is much more proficient. I'm not always the most proficient man. I'm not always the most precise man. But one thing I would deal with, I would deal with what's in our damn wicked minds, in our hearts. I will deal with that. We can't hear because our hearts are full of deceit and lies. That's why we can't hear Yisrael. And we certainly can't obey you know, when my mother would whip me, I would get the best results, even for me, when I, would, when I would take that whipping, and I would go somewhere, and I would cry, and I would weep. She whipped the rest of them, man. They'd ball up at her like, woman, I'll, you ain't doing that to me. I never did that to my mother. I didn't do it. I felt sorry for my mother. I saw her transition in life, men in and out of her life. Nobody cared for her. I felt sorry for my mother. My oldest brother, come on, he, he, he works on a job, would not even give the woman a dime. But I hustled to make money for her. I hustled to buy food. I remember my mother was going through the changes of life. I didn't know what the changes were. I heard them talk. And how her mind, she almost lost her mind. My mother almost lost her mind when she was going through that. She did. She was going through the changes of life. And there was a man living with us. His name was, his name was Jim Boozer. And so my mother and my aunt went to what they call the root doctor. Because my mother wanted to get rid of him. He, th this man was as young as my oldest brother living with my mother. Name was Jim Boozer. He didn't care for us. He would grill out a whole chicken and eat the whole chicken himself. Kind of dog he was. Of course, my, my mother didn't let no man come between us. You know, she wanted him out of her house. I remember as a young lad, six, seven years old, eight. I remember it. I'm not just talking. So they go to the root doctor. I recall this. I know what I'm saying. I remember them coming to our house. I remember overhearing, not overhearing, I was being nosy. Listen to my aunt and my mother. She said, in seven days, that's what she said. You do the seven days right here, he'll be gone. It was before the seven days were up, that man walks in one day saying, I'm leaving. Where are you going? I'm going to California. Didn't know anyone there. He said, I get paid tomorrow. I'm leaving. And that man left that day, and I'm not nine. That man went to California. He has never come back east to live. He has been in California since 1965. I recall it. I was about 10 years old. I recall it. Very vividly, son, I recall it. And I would see these activities, and I, even though I didn't know, yeah, I knew this wasn't right. And so that was promoted among the siblings. I never did touch that mess. I didn't, I didn't buy it. And so as my mother was losing her mind to all of her ways and her corrupt ways, uh, and she was a sickly woman, my natural brother would not give the woman a dime. But I knew back then I could go out and make three, four dollars in a day. I'd go hustle. I would go hustle. Raking leaves, whatever I had to do. To make sure there was some bread in the house. And I'm not saying that to promote me. I'm just telling you. I felt that. I sensed that. I knew her emotional uh, uh, drawbacks. And I was set back and watching with she. And she whipped the hell out of me too. Sometimes she whipped me. She didn't have to do me like that. When I became a man, I said, I tell you, I know why you whipped me, old woman. She said, well, I remember telling her this. 
Last time I saw her, I didn't see her for many, many years before she died. I said, can I tell you why you whipped me, old woman? Nobody was there but us. And when my aunt came, I got up and I left and never went back. She was in the hospital. I did go. I said, that was before we moved here. I said, uh, you beat me, old woman, because uh, you love my daddy, and he didn't love you, old woman. Come on, tell me the truth. Talking to her like that. So she looks at me and says, hmm. I was a pretty thing. I said, nah, that's why you did me like that. That's how I got you now. She had, she had had a stroke. Her mind wasn't functioning. But that day when I was there, her mind was functioning right. I'm not lying to you. I said, you loved that man, and he was a fine thing. He didn't care for you, and you took it out on me because you could not get him. That's the reason why. That's why you did me like that. And I'll never forget and I said that after she, we talked a little bit, I said, Mom, I won't tell you. I hold nothing against me. Every ass whipping you gave me, I deserved that plus more. I said, you didn't mess me up. And I appreciate that old woman. And she, she got quiet. She couldn't talk no more. And then by that time, my aunt came in. As soon as she walked, I said, okay, I'm going. You, no, that's all right. You, I'll see you. And I left and never saw her again. Never did. Never saw my mother again. Well, you all to feel bad. No, I don't feel bad. I told her the truth, even in my ignorance. No. And I wasn't going to compromise, y'all. Yeah. I told her one day, I will never come to your house again. You let them smoke dope here. You let them bring these young girls here. You hold on to their drug money. I will never come to the door. That's why my aunt... I haven't been in her house over 20 years and never will because she still lets her sons and her grandsons sell dope and they bring. I will never go there. Yeah. I said, I will never enter to your house and I haven't. I haven't. I don't go to their homes. You come here. You just make sure you dress right. And heifer don't come before me like that. Next time you come, you better come that way. They got a little honor for me. How'd they do? Okay. All right. Well, this is all I could find. I said, well, you better find something better than that next time. I don't play Yisrael. And I watched that denigration in my natural family. They all cried and loved each other, but they frankly don't give a damn about each other. They're not going to tell each other the truth. You know, I got nieces and nephews I've never seen. I don't know them. I don't even know them. I haven't seen them since they were like that. And they're grown men. 40 years old, 35, 30. And the only time they see me, they go to the internet and they see my picture. That's it. My natural brother died here recently. I had a cousin I had seen. She said, when the last time we'd seen each other, I said, it's been a long time. She says, it's been over 25 years. I said, I know it. It's been a long time. How are you doing? Oh, I'm just, I just want to let you know I still love you. I said, okay, you love me. All right. Well, you know, I want to come see you because I got, my son is in college down here, Florida. And they compete against each other. Who can educate their children? And they just, they don't have a damn thing. They're still in slavery. I said, all right, then. You know where I'm at. You come now. Make sure you dress right. Wear dresses, no pants. Fix yourself up right. Well, I don't have to worry about them coming. I won't see her for another 25 years. They wanted me to preach her father's funeral. And oh, that was a young, foolish preacher back then. I said, no. Yeah, I just don't feel that. And I'm not going. Well, they're fools that, so they can get up there and show them what they knew. They would have went and done that, not me. And that was the last part I was a part of any of their activities. That's been over 25 years. I didn't go preach it. So I hear from them, we had the preacher was waiting on you to come. And I was getting ready to come, but I say, go. I say, yeah, I just can't do that. I ain't feeling that. I don't want to be a part of it. And so I've always been a renegade. I've always been a reject from them. Am I sad? 
Nah. Come on, my Zachary. You have a rock. You all send an offering. Yes, yeah, send your tithes and offering. Here, we need it. I, the matter of fact, I need $100 to buy some seeds. May God bless you. All brach you. All Yisra. Ya Shalom. Hallelujah. Is not Yahweh Tov Yisra'el? Do we really believe that? Hallelujah. I believe it. Through thick, through thin, he's always with us. He instructs us. He guides us in the way that we must go. There's a way that we must go, Yisra'el. There's not many paths to the kingdom. There's not many paths unto the level of Almighty Yahweh. Just one path. That path is Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. So uh, let, let us stand to our feet. We're going to dismiss. Hallelujah. Give to the, Yah, to the Yah for all that he has done. And for bringing us this far by Imuna. Hallelujah. Abba Yahweh, we told you for yet another day, another beautiful Shabbaton you have given unto us, Abba Yahweh. We do ask Yahweh that your, your Barakiah and that your anointing will rest upon Kol Yisrael, those that are scattered around the world, Yahweh, and those that are here, here at Teshua community. We ask that those that have traveled from far and near Yahweh, you would take them back, that your Melikim will be a camp around the whole body of Yisrael. And all things we do, Barak you. And we do give you Toda for all things, Yah, for everything. In the precious and mighty name of Yahshua HaMashiach, we do declare, Hallelujah! 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 Yahweh! Hallelujah! Yahweh! Yahweh! Hallelujah!